Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. How many of you out there are fans of XRP utility? That is to say, how many of you love the idea of XRP actually being used in the real world for something more than just speculating and hodling? Everybody like that? Raise, raise your hand if so. Everybody raise their hand? Yeah, I think so. Well, there's a, there's a new platform that is being released uh, where you can look, you can see the title on the screen, uh, you can sell your music for XRP. Now, this piece was written up by a Ripple director named Craig DeWitt, and this project I had cited in the past, it's been in, in the news uh, yeah, at least a couple times over the last month and a half or so, whatever the timeline is, something to that effect. And so we got a new article today from Daily Hoddle on this, and it's titled, Ripple Director of Product Launches XRP Entertainment Marketplace for Music. Now, to be clear, before I even dig in any further, this is important for anyone that's an XRP holder. All of these these projects out there that have anything relating to utility, people actually using the cryptocurrency XRP, this is important to us as holders. You can imagine the effects of supply and demand that uh, successful platforms will have uh, on XRP. This matters. And so not that every single project out there related on XRP, especially in such early days, not that all of them are going to get traction or not that all of them necessarily are even good ideas. Maybe you don't know until you got to, you know, the benefit of hindsight, but some of them will get traction. And so I love highlighting all this stuff. And it's just amazing. There is no other cryptocurrency out in the world that is being positioned to be used for so many real-world things, to solve so many real-world problems. And thanks to its low cost for transactions and tremendous speed, low power consumption, all these things, from a technological perspective, it's a perfect candidate for stuff like this. So I'm going to run through this article. And also, you know what's been in the news a lot lately? Is uh, the Bank of America. I had, a, I had a video about them yesterday, and I'm not going to do a rehash of that. But uh, there's, a, there's a new piece here titled, uh, Bank of America Cites Ripple's Cross-Border Solution as Example of Innovation. So I just want to briefly touch on that. It's, it's different than what I put out yesterday, but it's just been fascinating to me that Bank of America has just been all over the place and all over my, uh, my Twitter feed. But before we go any further, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would please ever so delicately tap that like button, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. You don't have to do it, but if you're willing to, just know that you have my endless gratitude and also uh, it is advisable that you you subscribe to the moon lambo channel because if you don't i'm not going to say something bad is going to happen to you but there might be fire and brimstones in your future just saying i'm just as a friend just trying to help you out there all right let's dig in here now ripple's director of product is rolling out a new digital marketplace that will allow musicians to sell their songs online for xrp called X songs. And by the way, anytime there's an X in front of it, I assume that I'm not going to know how to enunciate this. I don't know what the, is, am I just supposed to say it like songs as if the X isn't there, but they're just doing it for stylistic reasons? Or do I say X songs? Nobody freaking knows. I, I don't, I'm just going to say X songs for now. So anyway, called X songs, the platform utilizes PayBurner, an integrated payment system built on top of the XRP ledger, says Craig DeWitt. And here's the actual tweet from uh, yesterday afternoon. And he wrote, Sell your music for XRP. The open beta for artists is now ready. The front-end buying experience will be coming in a few weeks. And then the article continues. There's no fee to upload or post songs, and musicians will receive 100% of the revenue from their sales through peer-to-peer -peer XRP payments. Now look, even without knowing more technical aspects as to how the platform is being built out, this type of thing without cryptocurrencies and distributed ledger technology quite simply was not possible. There's too many middlemen, there's too much centralization resulting in overhead, it simply was not possible. And there's nothing else, there's no other cryptocurrency uh, that I'm aware of anyway, being positioned to do anything remotely similar to this. So things like this, I, again, it'd be fun to fast forward in the future and see if it pans out, I hope it does, but stuff like this matters, people trying things, this matters, and thankfully for us as XRP holders, uh, XRP is the one that's most aptly suited for things like this. Anyway, uh, the marketplace won't support legacy payment methods and allows creators to set their own price. Indeed, so uh, that means leave your United States dollars at home, or if you don't use United States dollars, whatever stupid fiat currency you got in your wallet, you leave that at home, ain't no good here. DeWitt says the short-term goal of the platform is not to make money, but to create a thriving product that increases the usability of XRP. Now, guys, look at this. It's like so many key words in one sentence. Usability, XRP, thriving. The, wait, yeah, 
Wait, yeah, the was in there. Okay, yeah. So, so the also, keywords, I'm telling you. So here's a quote now. If you can build a product that drives significant value to the market, monetization will not be a problem. Uber loses money on every ride they give, but they've built something incredibly valuable. Now, that I uh, had not heard. Anyway, uh, the project is currently in beta for the uploading slash publishing side of the marketplace, which includes a wallet and the ability to manage music. And here's another quote. Once we've gotten enough music uploaded and finished building the front-end uh, marketplace, we'll turn on the purchasing side of X songs. This will be the front-end to allow anyone to buy songs. And then that wraps it by stating, that'll likely happen in a few weeks after the publishing build-up phase concludes, according to the Ripple executive. I don't know about you, but I, I think this is neat stuff. Like, it's just the fact that we have the opportunity uh, it's just to be in the world of cryptocurrency at such nascent stages. I know fine's been around 10 years, but uh, you know, eventually it's going to be 10, 20, 30 years in the future and people are going to look back and be like, "Oh man, I wish I had known about it <laughs> back then." And that, that that's how I feel. And so of course, let me be clear, n- none of what I'm saying here is financial advice whatsoever. No financial background, just a, a happy enthusiastic member of the XRP community, but I couldn't be happier to to be here. And uh, I always look forward to seeing how things unfold. It's It's been fun, uh, despite the bear market. I know the negative price action. Okay, maybe that part's not so fun. But even some see that as a buying opportunity. All right, next, here's a tweet from Money is XRP who tagged me and wrote this. If crypto goes through three-year cycles, I'm not upset about that. Just gives me more time to accumulate. People are talking about Bitcoin being down. Uh, I, I got in two and a half years ago. Uh, it was uh, under 1K at that point. Uh, still up seven times that at this point. Just wish I got XRP instead. And then again, tagged me there. So shout out to you, money is XRP. And I can sympathize with that. Because obviously at that point, I mean, look, I wish I had gotten in even earlier. I got in towards the end of 2017 into crypto. And my gosh, if I could have just found out about this in like January, you know, that would have been super duper. Because uh, once I found out about all this, I got into XRP uh, literally one week after I, I first invested in cryptocurrency using Coinbase. Literally one one week later, uh, I, I purchased my first cryptocurrency that wasn't listed on Coinbase and it was XRP. But, oh man, just like, if I could have had just six, seven, eight, nine months more, oh my gosh, that would have been fantastic. But that's okay, that's okay. So uh, anyway, shout out to you and thank you very much for, for tagging me. I'm sure many people listening to this can relate. Um, here's a tweet that I was tagged in by David Crespo. Shout out to you, good sir. And uh, that was a retweet of something from Han Solo, which was the uh, the aforementioned piece about Bank of America. And the reason this piece exists is because of none other than XRP community member Bank XRP. So I want to just touch on some of this. Um, yesterday, <laughs> I will just briefly mention, yesterday I put a video out about uh, Bank of America. They're abandoning their, their patent with Ripple, but um, they ended up filing a continuation, and that was stated by an XRP community member who actually looked into that, and I cited that information on the channel yesterday as well. And so I don't know all the technical reasons for, for why they're doing what they're doing, uh, and, and I, I don't know what the implications are, uh, having, you know, a, a, quote unquote, abandoned a patent, but then file a continuation for it. I can't speak to that. I'm not a lawyer, but I assume that it's some sort of strategic move that just has to do with the uh, the implications of whatever the timeline is for filing a patent, something to that effect anyway. So I, I, they've, obviously, they've obviously been, they have a relationship with Ripple, and they filed the patent, and they've said good stuff. And so to me, I think everything's probably just fine, and we can't read too much into what the intention for the patent was going to be anyway, at least as it pertains to XRP. But anyway... Uh, Ripple, the blockchain tech that oversees the distribution of the digital token XRP, strives to prove its worth in the world's payment industry on a daily basis. This has paid off in the past, and still paying off, considering the much-needed recognition it often receives and attention it attracts. According to the info hinted by an XRP-centric user, identified on Twitter as Bank XRP, Ripple's cross-border solution was cited as an example of innovation by Bank of America. Uh, the recognition caught little attention when this material went live around September 2019. Uh, the material that was made available in PDF included other innovations besides Ripple's effort to foster cross-border payment. And it is interesting that it, sometimes there will be news and it's hot. You can just tell. Like if you're on Twitter and you're part of the XRP community, you just scroll through and you can see what the hot new thing is that, that everybody's talking about on any given day. 
And it's interesting to me that on occasion, it, it could be a piece of news that, uh, you know, it's, you could, it's, well, it wasn't in the news, so you can't even call it news, but a piece of information that was created months prior that became news. And that's fascinating to me. Uh, it, it's you know what it, it comes down to is there are so many people in the XRP community digging through all sorts of different uh, you know piece of you know bits of information by whatever means they can, and uh, then when, it just inevitably <clears throat> when something interesting is found it's shared and then that's when <clears throat> Twitter feed explodes with that information which is cool stuff here and so here's the actual tweet from Bank XRP, uh, Bank of America. Ripple cross border sol- uh, cross border solution Ripple's distributed ledger solution. That's I think that maybe. Yeah, I think that maybe didn't mean to put two ripples in the first sentence there. That's okay though. Uh, Ripple's distributed ledger solution remedies legacy correspondent banking infrastructure challenges and provides bi-directional messaging to enhance payment tracking, data transmission, and enables enhanced certainty in settlement keyword settlement right there and then here's the image that he had associated with that particular tweet right there and so uh, bank of america gets it but as, as far as moving money around the planet it's like i always say with like the larger banks i still believe and, and ripple is um they've acknowledged as much i've, I've seen a, a sheesh burley he's an svp at ripple i uh, talk just talk about the idea of how they've they've really had to hone in the idea of what their their target customer is and it turns out the largest banks are not their ideal candidates today uh, because it's the smaller banks that are experiencing the most friction as it pertains to moving money around the planet because they don't have pre-funded accounts the world over. They have to pay to tap into the liquidity of their larger competitors. And so that's really uh, what's, what's happening. And that's I mentioned that too when I was uh, making this video about Bank of America just, just yesterday. So eventually, though, if, if all of that source of revenue dries up and the little banks aren't paying the big banks anymore for their pre-funded accounts because they're using on-demand liquidity, inevitably it'll won't make sense for the larger entities to have these uh, reserves the world over that just aren't getting tapped into either as much or at all. I mean, I, I don't think that pre-funded accounts are 100% going away ever for a number of reasons I've discussed in the past, but uh, greatly diminished. I think they'll be greatly diminished. And so it would make sense to kind of free up some of that dormant capital and use it for something else eventually, even if it takes a while to get there, if, if, you know, if you're one of these larger banks. But uh, that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau!